Well, I like going hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the crappie, and the brim. Just give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. I like going down to the fishing hole, my buddies and me and my old cane pole. Bake them hooks and wet them lines, it's life I love so fine. It's almost supper time, you'd think the world was mine. And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Folks, we've got a real, real interesting show for you today. We're going to talk about how the deer was used by the Indian and how it was totally utilized. And got Kenny Berry here from up at, is it Fackler? Fackler, Alabama. Fackler, Alabama. And I want you folks to look at what Kenny's got on. You know, we always thought of the early man as... You know, run around, didn't didn't stay warm or nothing. But this is a, a raw hide or buckskin shirt that he's made, and it was made from a deer skin that is brain tanned, and it's a very unusual method. I mean, I've been a taxidermist business about 35 years, and I've tanned a lot of hides, but this is the most unusual phenomenon. This real soft flannel-like hide here. It's tanned with nothing but the brains of the deer. No chemicals involved. It's more of a physical process than anything. And the Indians used it for everything. They used it to put their, their uh, haft in, their, uh, any of their stone implements. They used it to make the implements that they tanned with. They used it to sew all of their clothing together. So it was the mainstay of the deer. All right, punch us a few holes, and then we'll show how we string it in there, and we'll move along with this tanning process. Okay. And we'll start right down here on the lower leg, and we just go in, make us a hole here. I'm going to come up about three or four more inches, and I'm going to make another one. You're going all the way around this skin. Every three inches, you're going to punch a hole in this skin on That's the right. edge. That's right. That's right. Now, it don't have to be exactly three inches. You don't have to get a ruler out and do this. You just, you just punch them through as you get ready. All right, now we're going to tie on here in this corner. I always start in the same place. I mean, it took me a long time to finally figure out how to keep one straight in here, but it's just as simple as staying where you are on the skin. Make sure you're at that same point on the frame. If you're in the center of the neck, you want right here. If you're at the corner of the neck, you want here. Okay. If you're at the tail, you want in the center on that end. All you right. know, simple as that. And you got to swear these holes got to be about what, about an inch wide there so you stick your finger right. in there, right? Yeah, yeah, of right. course, they can be smaller, but it works yeah, a whole trouble, lot better. It right. works a whole lot better if you've got them about an inch wide. And I'm gonna go in one, come under my frame here. Of course, I've, I've read and talked to different people. They say they really don't care how you lace the thing in there as long as you get it in there straight and, and, and get it in there tight. It pulls tight. even, don't you? Right. That's where you as it dries, it pulls even like a, like a head on a drum, That's right? right. That's what you okay. want it to do. All right, now I'm going to just do like a sewing method here. Now I'm just going to come up through this one. I'm going to go down through this one. I'm going to come up through this one. Just like I'm stitching it. Yeah. Just like okay. I'm stitching it up. Okay. All right, and after I come out of that one, gonna I'm going to come here. That. Now see where I am? Yeah. Here's the middle of my skin. Well, I'm almost to the center of my frame here. Okay. Now I'll come under one time. Now you're gonna go through the hole one time and then sew a couple of holes. Is that what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I sew about three of them. Three seems to work out. And then go best. back to the, go back to the pole. Right. Okay. All right, we've got it laced in here now, Archie. Okay. Pretty much, we've just got a straight pull. We haven't got that many diagonal pulls going on it yet, and we'll have to get those. We're gonna have to pull these legs up this way and get them stretched out just right. And we we're gonna go all the way back around it here. This will take about five minutes, maybe to not untie any of these, but I'm gonna go through each each loop here and tighten it up real good. We want this thing just as tight as we can get it in it's here. Like a drum, right? Without pulling it out. All right, look here, let's show them something else here too. Can I, some of them took, a lot of time people see what they think was an arrowhead and all. Mm -hmm. It was a stone knife. Oh yeah. That's your rawhide you put on there. And that would be used to, 
Yeah, just get take that, that meat, meat off in one piece. Now, I need to get that where it can be seen. How good Yeah, how good that's this cutting knife there. works. And it works like a charm. It's a knife that they use, and they just re retouch it up and resharpen it as they went. Look at, look at that meat come yeah. off there. That tool Archie's using could be 10,000 years old. At, we at least. And still works. All right, now, Kenneth, now what are we doing on this last go round here now? now? We're getting the membrane off now. That's that real thin, like, skin that lies under the meat and the fat. Now, sometimes it lies on top of it, but it's right next to the skin. We've got to get every drop of it yeah, off, too. Yeah, and we're down to the skin. It's hanging on my here stuff. You've got to clear your tool there pretty often, Yeah, you've got to clean your tool off. But this membrane will keep the oils from the brain from penetrating down into those skin fibers. So we got to get so it off. Get every drop of it off. Yeah, right? it's got to come off. Okay, now here's the skin that we've already fleshed, and it's been out in the sun. Boy, it's good and, and tight. Oh, yeah, it's tight, and it's nice and dry and tight in this frame, and we're going to flip it around, and we're going to scrape the hair and the grain off the other side. All right, now the purpose of this, now to correct me if I'm wrong on this thing, Kenneth, we've got the membrane off the front side. Right. We're going to take the, the hair and the epidermis, right. the hair seats, right right under there. Now we just got the middle part of the leather, which yeah. is like a chamois skin, right. isn't it? Right, that's exactly and right. And it'll be porous and it'll be flexible. Right, it'll, okay. be, it'll be like a piece of wool cloth almost, and we're going to just break them fibers apart. Okay. This, this skin is like you said, it's, it's a layer of skin sandwiched between an endodermis, which we're, we've been calling membrane, right. and the epidermis, which supports the hair. The other side. And we're going to take the... Now we're going to get the other side right. We're taking the bread off and we're getting to the meat. So ah, there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm going to hold up a piece of this. See, right there is what we're taking off. That's your, that's your top layer of your skin. That's what supports the hair. And that's what we've got to get off here to get down to the skin layer. Now what we got in the bucket here, Kenneth? We got brains in here, and that's why it's called brain tan. And All right, now uh, on a deer, how many deer brains would it, would, what does it take to do a hide? Well now, there, you, you've heard the old saying, being an old tanner, you say if you've heard that, every animal's got enough brains to tan its own hide. And, and okay. a deer's the same way, right? Deer's the same way. One deer brain will tan a hide. Uh -huh. But I like to go just a little extra mile. The more oil you put in there, the less you have to run it through the brain and process, which okay. is, you know, putting it in, take it out and wring it, and then put okay. it back in. Okay. So if you get more brain oil in your solution, then you, you don't have to work it as much. Okay, so how many, how many are we going to use on We're going to use about three right here. Three deer brains on this one. Yeah. All right, well, let's do it. All right, and what we're going to do now, wait, one other thing on these brains here i want to tell tell the group here that i've checked with all my tanning people i've checked with research people nobody really knows what these brains do to that hide to make that thing soft no they can't give you no chemical that's nobody i know of can do it now maybe somebody out there in our audience that may can yeah but I've never met the man that can. But you, we know there's oil in it. Oh, yeah. And we know there's other substances that makes that thing soft, but we don't know what it is. That's right. That's all right, right, let's do it. So what, what I'm going to do is liquefy these now. This, okay. this is the fun part. Now, oh, yeah. That some people right. talk about running these through a blender, but the reason I do it by hand is to get bone fragments out. That's going to cut me, and it's going to punch holes in my skin. Look there, what a chunk of bone. Yeah. So I do this by hand. Just squeeze them up real good. That's just, right. Yeah, we want. In other words, we want them pulverized. Right. We want we want the oils in this to, turned loose. Now to to further get the oils out of this, we're going to add boiling water to it. So it'll take them into. So it'll That's be in right. solution when we put it on there. That's right. right. That's right. I got you. Okay. And then we'll add enough cold water so we don't scald ourselves, and uh, we'll cut that hide out of the frame and put it in here. There you go. All right. Alrighty. There we go. There it is, folks. Like a piece of paper. Beats mm -hmm. anything I ever seen in my life. Look at that. Sounds like paper, don't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Once we get it in here, we're just going to work it. By hand, until we're pretty sure that it's totally saturated. You got it in there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I was beginning to wonder that for a minute. <laughs> And this brain's also, you see this thing stained with a lot of blood on it, but yeah. that, that brain solution to get that out. It'll, it'll bleach it out. It'll bleach that out. Well, I'll just be 
That's now, with, it, with, with this solution you got, if you had a couple of more coming down the line, could you use any more? Or you just need. To well, that now one? you could, but it'd be a little weaker. It'd be weaker. Got. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. to make sure. Oh, look at that. Look at that? that. It's just like a rag. Now, I just wish you'd look at that. That's just like a washcloth. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious and, alive. And it was like paper, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. Okay, Archie, now while, while we still got that skin soaking over in the brains, okay. we got some downtime now that we don't, there's nothing we can do to it until it's ready to go. Okay. And we can leave it in that, that brain solution for 30 minutes or an hour. We'll just have to check it every now and then to see if it's getting ready. And once it's just sopping wet, sat, totally saturated with that brain solution, then it'll be ready for the next step. Okay. So while that's happening over there, we go out and get our punky wood just old rotten oak in this case real rotten old oh, wood. yeah something that ain't going to burn okay you know, we, it, it needs to be just too rotten to burn all it all we want it to do is smolder and put off a lot of smoke and that's what we're going to smoke it and give it that nice color the last step is to smoke it yeah that'll be our last step and we'll go over that when we get there right now we got to get right. the fire going while that's soaking that's right and we, we got to pulverize this wood and get it all powdered up real good so we'll be doing that while our skin's smoking good all right, Kenneth. You say it's done now. Yeah. Uh, the thing to check is your neck. All Go right. back and find your neck. That's always your thickest part. And when that neck is like this. It's like rubber, Oh, yeah. It? It's just like a big old dish rag or something soaking right. wet. Right. Then that, that lets us know that surely then the rest of the skin's ready because the, the neck's always your thickest portion. All right. So we're going to wring excess moisture out of this thing. All right. You need me to hold one end of that thing or... No, How we gonna do this? No, we'll uh, we'll get it all here with one slick little trick. All right, get most of the excess out. They don't now, even look like a deer skin right now. This no. doesn't change complexions already. Yeah. All right, and we're gonna open it up here nice and wide. And you see what a big old skin we've got here. Pretty good size one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's uh long enough now. All right. Tell me what to do. Okay, we're gonna roll it up in this rope here. Roll it up in the rope. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fold it around like this, and we're going to divide it into two-thirds here and one-third here. All right. And we fold that right around. Okay. And we bring this end around here, and we're just going to make kind of a sleeve out of it, and we're just going to twist it around on itself. Uh-huh. And keep rolling Making this Making a circle, aren't right. you? Right, exactly what we're doing. Get our neck portion in here. And then we're going to just twist it up like this. And put our stick through it. All right, we'll have to take our, get our slack up and rope. Now see what also is coming out of it? Is that blood? Uh-huh. We're bleaching that blood out of it. Actually, we're wringing that blood out of it. All those blood stains that were in there that we were so yeah. worried about. Yeah. Boy, I mean, that gets it out, don't yeah. it? Yeah. Plus, that is really putting a stretch -a job on that thing. Mm -hmm. Boy, it looks like it'd tear that thing all to pieces, don't it? Yeah, but it's tough. If I can get my stick to lock. Yeah, we go. We just let oh. it oh, boy, boy. We just let it drip for a while until all the excess gets out of it. Mm. All right, now Archie, right here is where we're about to get into the work. All right, we done we done wrung that thing. I don't believe you can get no more out of there. No. And we've done played all we're gonna play today with this skin. The scraping and the fleshing, that, that wasn't no trouble at all compared to what we're about to do now. now if all you right. want to help me with this slimy all right. thing, all right. we'll we'll get it opened up real good. Okay. And we gotta we gotta start stretching it. And we're going to start with the neck of our skin so we can just keep straight on it here. And we're going to just pull it. And we've got a hand on this side and a hand on this side. And we're going to stretch it out this way and just pull the bounce on it. And sometimes you'll lose your grip and you'll end up back there in the back somewhere. But we're just going to pull it and then we're going to work it down about a hand width. We're gonna no, yeah, this starts the physical property. Yeah, ain't this, nothing chemical now. Yeah, this is all this, hard physical labor. That's right. And this don't stop until this thing's dry. All right. Now, in regular tanning, what you're doing here is you break it and pull it 
the moisture's going out, the oil is going in, but right. you're stretching it to give it somewhere for that oil to go into, right? Right, right. You're getting every stretch, everything out of it you can get. That's right. And we're, we're separating the fibers is what we're separating doing. Separating the fibers. We're going to separate them this way, and you notice I'm just working hand over hand, and you try not to lose your place. We're, okay. down, we're down to the hip areas on this thing now, and the hips, along with the neck and right down the center of the back, is the thickest portion of your skin. Now we're three hours into this thing now. Mm -hmm. And are we close to through on yeah, this part? Yeah, see it's starting to, you can feel right along them edges right, now there. I want to show these people to look at this. This will absolutely stagger your mind. Now that was a raw skin four, five, six hours ago. Now look at it, it looks like a damp towel. We're not done yet, still a little bit damp, but yeah, we, still we're just damp. on the last go round it. Now look at the stretch in this thing. Look at there, just look at that. Mm -hmm. Now we're. As soon as this last little bit, and we'll be through here in just a minute, but this is all we're gonna do, but we gotta make sure it's bone dry. Right. And then what's the next step? Now, then Kenneth? we're gonna stitch it up into a tube and we're gonna force smoke through it. Okay. With that rotten wood that we were looking at a while ago. All right, let's go get it. Okay. All right, now, Kenneth, you got one right there. Is he smoking right now, right? Yep, yep, we got it turned around now. We've already smoked the one side, you can see, and now we've turned it inside out and we're doing the other side. Okay, and then you got your, got your punky wood in there. Yeah. Boy, it's really blowing some smoke out that yeah, top up there. Yeah, it'll really, and you want to keep it opened up. Don't let it flop around on here. Keep it opened up and let the smoke get to all parts of it. And how long is this going to take now? Oh, 10 or 15 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, with the intensity of this smoke. And see, I can put my hand in here, and it's not so much heat that it's scalding me. Okay. Now remember, what, this is skin. If it'll burn you, it'll burn this. So. All right. Now, the Indians didn't have that little old stove like you've got in that smoke pipe. How'd they do it? Uh, they dug a hole in the ground. And then they staked it down. They hung it from a tripod like we got here, but they, they had a hole in the ground like here. And they would just kind of stake that on the ground around that hole. And then had they'd come right out the top. wood in there and let it Real just simple. Up. Right. All right, now, this is the wood we put in there. Yep. And this is the hide. It's ready to go as soon as we get that one smoked. Yeah. Finished up. Get that one opened out real good. We'll open it out good, stretch it on out. Then we're going to take our clothes pins, or we could sew it. Yeah, we could stitch it up in a tube. Put it up under there for 15 minutes and then take it back and turn it around, reverse it. Right. Smoke the other side. Yeah. And then, then the purpose of the smoke now, give me that right Okay. Quick. Now, the creosote that's in this smoke is going to coat each one of these little fibers that makes this thing up. That way, the next time it gets wet, the water's going to run through the skin. Okay. And, and the fibers themselves, the skin fibers themselves, are not going to soak the water up because they're, they're coated with creosote. And you can wash this just like a shirt. Just like wool. And then you just kind of pull it like you would coming out of the dryer. That's right. And, fluff and you it got, up. got that kind of stuff. That's All right. right. And we'll open it up and see what the inside looks like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that pretty? And the longer you leave it on, the darker it's going to get. That's right. All right, now show us That's how right. it's buckskin. Show us how tough it's buckskin. Okay. Let me borrow a cigarette here. I don't smoke, don't urge anybody to, but. Look at that smoke come out of there. Came right through it just like it was a piece of cloth. Right. That it's, is true buckskin. It is can't not do leather. It leather. It's not leather. It's treated rawhide. That's right. And when it's smoked, it's called buckskin. That's Unsmoked, right. Unsmoked, it's called rawhide. That's right. All right. Got one other thing to show what it's used for, and uh, we've done it. Okay. All right. Now, folks, you saw it done. Kenneth showed us everything. Now, go go over what, we, what we've got brain tanned here with us now. Now, okay. this, starting off with your uh, flint napping thing. Okay, here. that's my little flint napping pack. I carry my tools in it. But this is just untreated rawhide. They, we, we scraped the hair off of this and left it dry. Okay. And the same would that with be the what's on these, on these uh, hammers and all? Would that be rawhide there? Right. That, that, the rawhide was Indian's equivalent of cardboard. Yeah. You know, they made boxes and pouches. And and they, and they would get it wet and they'd haft into their, their hammers and stuff, wouldn't they? Right. And it draws down tight when it gets oh, dry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a right. heat shrink. And then this is this has been treated, though. That is, that's completely brain tanned right there, isn't it? Yeah, that's little, that, that was brain tanned. But under that now, it's wrapped with rawhide. Raw the same way you have to those on that. there. All right, show us these items that you've made from, okay, from well, your brain tanning. This is, uh, this is my little girl's dress. This is all brain tanned. Uh, here we've got a breech cloth and leggings. And and these have been, all been smoked too, right? All been smoked. All right. this stuff has been worn and, and uh, some of these items are five and six years old right. and still wear just like they did the day we made them. Here's a nice little or unsmoked 
that's like this one. Hadn't right, been smoked. Right, it's but just dried and worked. It's just white. And yeah. it's just as soft as anything you'd ever want to see mm -hmm. in life. Here's a couple of pairs of men's moccasins, western style, and here's a women's eastern style pucker toe moccasins. All this made this is where the Indians set up their bow and quiver and all, isn't it? Yeah, bow case with the quiver, and all this is brain tan set for the bottom. Uh -huh. The bottom's rawhide. And I it, see. it's glued in with, with glue made from the hide. Well, I'll be. And now, uh, here's a pipe bag or pouch, breech cloth, and we got shirts, jackets, uh, all this stuff made from brain tan. Every bit of it. Every bit, and it'll wear from now on. Well, folks, y'all seen it done. This has just absolutely staggered my mind how you can take a, a raw skin and not chemically tan it at all, take the brains of the deer, and turn it into all these items. So this, this was the grocery store or the dry goods store, which was the hide of the animals. They were their ingeniality, and these folks were sharp. Don't ever think they wouldn't. They was plenty sharp. Turn all of these items into usable garments right from the deer, and everything is in the deer that's necessary to do all this with. That's right. And uh, Kenneth Barry, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, buddy. You've got your act <laughs> together up here in Fackler, <laughs> Alabama. Isn't that where we're at? Fackler, uh, Fackler Alabama. Fackler, you Alabama. Got that right. And uh, we're going to come back and do some more stuff. We appreciate you inviting us up and give us an opportunity to see it done well, like it ought to have been well, done. Well, go tan you some hides. There now. you go. And y'all folks, stay tuned again next week for some more Outdoors with Archie Phillips.